Hi again, Physics 132, uh, promised in class, and I figure it's a good idea anyway. I've got a, a new video file here for Hints for Test 3, which is coming up less than a week from when I'm posting this. And I'm starting with the exact same slides I had for Hints for Test 2. They start out with general study hints, which are, as it says, general. Start early. It is too late for me to give that hint. Hopefully you have learned that by now. Uh, also notice you get a sheet of notes. Start preparing it early. May not be too late to start saying that. Many people put it off until the last day or two before the test. I saw someone preparing it half an hour before the test last time. That person actually did okay. If it works for you, procrastinate. It doesn't work for most people, and it's not a good generic strategy. Start preparing the notes early. It gives you a chance to rethink everything, think about what's important, think about how to organize stuff, which helps you get through the test. Look at the old tests that are posted. There's a lot of them. In fact, I would note now, the finals actually share a lot of interesting problems that might appear on third tests as well as the old third tests. I've pointed to a couple of things on old third tests. Have I said that enough times uh, during class? I'll point to one again later. <clears throat> you should at least flip through the relevant sections of the book. I don't talk about the book a lot, but I really do look at it, and I really did base all of my lecture notes on it. I refer to it often in class, so you might as well look at it. You paid for it and it wasn't cheap. Work together when you study. It's important. It helps the people who are struggling a little bit to have someone be able to help them along, and someone who's got some of the same issues now. It helps the people who are really on top of things to get a chance to think of how to explain them because that's one of the best ways to learn. Get help if you don't understand. The first way to do that is to work together. The next way to do it would be talk to me. You can also get help from other groups on campus, other students, other faculty in our department, or since you guys are a section full of CAMS high school students, maybe some of your high school teachers could help you. For my class, there are some specific things that don't apply everywhere. Lots of old tests are posted, as I just noted, not just tests from this time, some of the final. Look through them for common themes. I have noted common themes to you. I'll mention a couple later. I, I noted them in class. Uh, do be careful. Not every year has the exact same coverage for third tests. If there are problems on things we haven't gotten to yet, don't bother trying to work those. If there are problems that we already covered on the second test, the same thing applies. Uh, do be careful. <clears throat> Don't throw out the whole problem because one part of it is past what we've done or reflects old things. Sometimes the different parts of a problem are from things that we did cover now or didn't cover now. You should, if you get a chance, any chance at all, Take one of those old tests, especially one for which there's a solution, and try it in test mode. That is, sit down, time yourself, have only your calculator and your sheet of notes, just like in the test, and do it like it was a test. Except, you know, maybe have a snack with you and things because you're relaxed at home. Then look at the solution after. Try to figure out not just how you did, but why some of the things that you got wrong, you might be able to do now. Uh, do note, in 2001, the course had two days a week instead of three with longer periods. There were only two tests. Uh, so basically, don't bother looking for an old third test from them. There wasn't one. Did cover all the same topics in general, but in quite a bit different timing. <coughs> More hints, son my tests, uh, not just studying, but taking them. You've taken two. You've looked at all these old ones. 
If you're looking at this, chances are you really did look at some of the old tests. When you get to the test, look through. You know that some parts with equal point value have very different difficulty. Sometimes I'll even throw you something for free, as long as you look. Sometimes things are really hard. I'm trying to discriminate the top few people in the class and figure out who's really, really ahead of the curve versus really on top of things. I need to know that, but it doesn't always affect everyone. So look through, do the parts you know how to do first. Don't panic if a couple do look beyond your range. As I've said many times now, I try to put at least one that I think is probably beyond everyone's range because I, I want to see, I want to know who's beyond the pale. If something seems too easy to be true, you can ask about it. Go ahead and ask me if you're not sure. Uh, quite likely, I'll tell you, take it at face value because once in a while I do put something on just to see that you're really reading what's there. You've seen this before. I've put things either that just ask you to write something or do something trivial, or I've put things that are given information on the test that I want to see who's reading what's on the test. And coupled with all those things before, if you don't know, ask. If I can't tell you, I'll say I can't tell you. If I can tell you, I'll tell you something useful, and it will help. So, now to the specifics of this test. The things I have mentioned in class, I'm going to repeat them. Uh, I might have mentioned more things, but these are the ones I remember saying at least once. Uh, the last couple third tests each had a problem using the magnetic field near a long straight section of wire. I'm not going to bother going through now and showing you what those were, because you can look at the last couple third tests. Since then, I've looked in almost every third test I've given had a problem using that. One of them asked something about how it's derived. It asked to set up an integral not to do it. The others all had something using the derived result we had. So make sure that formula is on your sheet. I also definitely will have a problem on either inductor with resistor or inductor with capacitor. I told you that in class and I'm going to stand by it. It will be on the test. One of those two things. I note that I tried really hard, and I said this, I tried really hard to make sure that I got to AC circuits and impedance and all the things about impedance and phase because I wanted to make sure it was possible to put on the test. If you didn't wonder why I would make sure I got it so that I could put it on the test, think about it. I'm probably going to put that on the test. It may not be a huge problem, but it will be there. So make sure you have the relevant formulas, impedance, phase angle, and the relevant other information, whether voltage is ahead or behind current for inductors, for capacitors, the fact that it's not ahead or behind with a resistor. What the difference is for a series versus a parallel circuit, because I showed you that, which I once put on a test, Finally, my couple big specific hints, and I do this the same way I did it last time. I've got some diagrams here that I decided I want to use something at least vaguely like this. Uh, may change some of the numbers, may clean up a little of the connections, but this is a variation on a problem I used in class to show you the LR circuit. And I'm thinking that if I do this, I can talk about parallel series and LR circuits all at the same time. Another problem I thought of that might look like a clock to you, and a clock you know how it moves in time. It's got some arrows in it. it might represent a field of some sort. So I've got motion through a field in time. If you looked at my other videos, you might actually see a reference to something vaguely similar to this without the diagram. Finally, I note this diagram that is too small to read here because you've seen it before a few times. 
I thought of a creative way to use that on this test where I might use the same numbers as before because frankly they're not gonna matter and I like the idea of a creative new use of the same diagram for a slightly different problem so you might want to flip back through this slide a couple of times pause on it and think about how I would ask the questions related to these things because I'll probably clean up the diagrams put more information on but I took some time to draw two of these and the third one I am proud of how I created a new problem around it so it's probably worth looking at finally I repeat again worrying too much is a waste of time Worrying just a little bit keeps you on edge, makes you think about what's important, but worrying more than that is a waste of time, a waste of energy, raises your blood pressure, and can shorten your life. Don't shorten your life just for the test, especially when it won't help. Take it easy, but take it. Have a good time. Bye.